Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Philosophia. Philosophia is a self-published title. It's for one to six players, ages 14 and up, and games range anywhere from 45 to 120 minutes. In Philosophia, you will live an epic odyssey adventure, taking on the role of one of ancient Greece's greatest thinkers. Forge your destiny in an age of city-states and ancient wisdom. You will be building schools, and competing in open debates, as well as gaining in wisdom and perhaps making deals with the ancient Olympic gods, all in an effort to be declared the greatest thinker of the era. So your goal in philosophy is to be the first to get three labyrinth tokens in a world that's soon to be overrun by the Romans. Now there are multiple paths to victory here, all kinds of different things you can do on your turn, a little bit of a sandbox feel here. So let's jump in and take a look. All right, so there is quite a bit to set up in this game. However, once you jump in and start to see how it flows, it works really well and is straightforward to set up. But let's hit some of the high points here, is that you first have your game board and there are different sides of the game board based on the number of players in the game. So you'll set up that board and you have location tokens that you're gonna be spreading out across the continent and putting them in their corresponding locations. However, these tokens have different bonuses on the back side. You're gonna shuffle them up and place them out randomly. You have your various cards and things that are gonna get placed out as well. And we'll talk about some of those as we jump into how the game works. Now, here are your labyrinth tokens that you're sought after tokens that you're really trying to get throughout the game and you wanna keep an eye on how to do that. But again, like I said, multiple paths to get there, to get those tokens, there are different ways to go about this. Lots of room for strategy as you evolve and play this game. Now, each player is gonna take on the role, like I said, of one of these great thinkers. You'll get a player board, you'll get schools and follower cubes, and then you'll have your cards that you'll start with. They all start in a locked position as you'll have to gain wisdom to unlock those and they might be part of your win conditions as well so you keep an eye on those and then you have a secret objective card which is your big card this card is crucial because this is one of the big ways that you could potentially get those tokens those labyrinth tokens and each of these thinkers has their own starting items that potentially could be cards it could just be money things of that nature and each of the thinkers are represented by these awesome uh, miniatures, they're like the statuettes, right? And they're really, really cool. Uh, but you'll place them out on this board where their starting position is called for. And then you have your various tokens like money and so forth and building tokens, things like that. And all the different types of cards will be placed out in the board in their corresponding spots. And then finally, you have the sand timer. You're gonna put on the timeline at 1194 BC. This is kind of your track. This is your track, actually. To get to the end, you're gonna want to have those three labyrinth tokens in order to trigger the end of this timeline. So let's jump in and start to take a look. Now, there's a lot to this game, and there's all kinds of actions you can perform. There's like 13 different actions, and there's some special requirements based on what, where you're at and what you're doing. Now, the first thing you have to always do, though, is move. You're gonna move to anywhere in Greece, and then you're going to do a couple things here. First, you're gonna land on the spot and see if anyone has built a school. If one of your fellow players has built a school, then you have to pay one gold, or one coin, I should say, in order to enter there. However, if you don't have any coins, then there's no charge. And if there's a location token still available, you have a couple options here. You can flip the token over and see what the one-time bonus is and take that, either a card or whatever it calls for or you can potentially take that token and put it on your player board, not gaining the bonus. Now, why would you do that? Well, this is one of the ways that you can potentially get a labyrinth token, which is the big key thing you're trying to do in the game. However, everyone might be trying to do that, and you can see on your player board that it's pretty clear that if you start collecting these tokens, folks will try to block you at whatever you're doing to not allow that to happen, Potentially, but that is one of the paths to getting a Labyrinth token. Now, one of the great things about this game is that turns move really, really fast. So you're moving, you're checking the location token, and then you perform one action. So the one action 
can be any numerous things, but let's take a look at some of the basics first. Things like tutoring. You're gonna move into a place, you're gonna gain a coin to tutor the different students there. Now, you can also move into a space and have a follower. You place one of your follower cubes out into that location. Or you might move into an area and hire a builder. Now, why would you hire a builder? Well, this does cost two coins. So the reason you're doing this is so on a subsequent turn, you could potentially build a school. And schools are gonna be great because they are a way to generate money as your fellow players move into those locations. Another action you may perform is hiring a sophist on your turn. And the thing here is that these were great debatists of the day, trying to sway people to your side. So you need to gain a sophist token by spending a coin in order to then use a sophist later in a subsequent turn. And what you'll do is if you arrive in a city where other players have put followers, you can exchange that follower for one of yours by using the sophist token. Now your final basic action is to gather a labyrinth token if you've completed one of the different requirements to do so. We've talked about a couple of those already by putting location tokens on your player board, by completing your main objective, which is your Olympic request. That one in particular is super powerful because if you complete all the requirements of that card, you then gain three labyrinth tokens, which is pretty slick. And the thing here is that, again, there are six different ways to get these tokens, so lots of different paths to victory. Now, there's a few other special actions worth noting. When you travel to a temple, then you have the option to study, and you'll spend four coins to do so. Gathering study tokens. Study tokens allow you to unlock your wisdom cards. Again, wisdom cards might play into potentially even an Olympic request or different things that you may be doing throughout the game. So you will do want to study. Again, again, there's multiple paths here on how you play this game. So that is just one option. Or you might visit an oracle. One of the oracle locations in green will then allow you to pull a card from one of the decks. Now, these oracle decks have very different things and can really help you in certain situations and give you extra abilities. So timing when you grab these is super important, but they really do add a lot to the game. Or you might enter into the Acropolis. Now the Acropolis has its own set of actions and you cannot perform any of the basic ones here. Now the first symbol we're looking at is all about getting cards to enter into a debate with. These cards are going to really help you. So you have a couple choices here. You can either grab two sophistry cards or one, say that's right, syllogism card. So these cards again will play into your debates and we'll take a look at that in a sec. Or you might move the timeline ever closer to the end, especially if you're close to getting your third labyrinth token. And then we have the Athena offering. This is all about bidding. You're gonna be bidding to get the benefits of the top Athena card. Now, if you called for the bid, you do have the option to swap that card, but you don't know what's underneath, so you are really trying to go for whatever that top card probably is and outbidding your fellow players to do so. And the final thing you're gonna be looking at in the Acropolis is moving into an open debate. You'll pick someone at the table, they can't refuse you, and that's where these sophistry and syllogism cards come into play. It is a bit of a rock, paper, scissors. You're gonna be flipping over a card, and your opponent will do the same, and you'll compare to see what card beats what, collecting those cards for the winner. And this will go back and forth until someone or both players have decided, I'm done with this, and no more cards are gonna be played. And a, a winner is declared by calculating how many cards have been collected. And if you won the debate, then you'll get a debate token. And why is that important? Because every three debate tokens gets you another labyrinth token. So it all comes down to, again, performing all these possible actions and trying to gain those labyrinth tokens. Again, there are six different ways to get those labyrinth tokens. We covered a couple again by traveling, you can get them. You can get them by building schools. You build four and four locations, you can get a labyrinth token. By unlocking all your wisdom cards, that's another way to get a labyrinth token or you may have placed nine of your followers in nine different locations. Or you may have had enough debates, winning three debates, again, will give you a labyrinth token. And there are oracles. There's a set of oracle cards you can get that will gain you labyrinth as well. And of course, the big one of them all is the Olympic request. If you perform 
all the requirements of your secret objective. Again, this gives you three of those Labyrinth tokens. Now, one thing we need to talk about briefly is the fact that as you gain those tokens, some are numbered. So when you get your third token, you get the lowest possible number available in those Labyrinth tokens. And that all plays into the final, final end of the game. If multiple players have three Labyrinth tokens and you've reached the end of the timeline track, then you have to enter into one more open debate to win and be declared the ultimate thinker of Greece. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. So I have to say this game does have that kind of sandboxy feel to it. You are doing multiple things from multiple paths to victory and I like that you have so many choices about getting those labyrinth tokens and the debates are really fun. They do have that rock, paper, scissor aspect to them. So keep that in mind. And you know what, if you want more nitty gritty of how the game plays, they've actually developed a really good how to play video. So go give that a look as well. But ultimately folks, if this looks like something that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.